Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to St. Olaf Catholic Church. Today we gather to celebrate the great octave of Easter, octave of Easter, when we give thanks for the giving of the Holy Spirit to the disciples and the birth of the church. A special welcome to any visitors among us. We also welcome all who are watching this liturgy via the live stream and the television broadcast. Our presider is Father Kevin Kenny. At the sign of peace, a simple gesture or a bow is always appropriate. With respect for the celebration of the Mass, please silence all cell phones and electronic devices at this time. Please stand and face the main doors in the back of the church for opening rites. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always. Amen. And my dear brothers and sisters, in your mercy, we are present in prayer to the Lord our God. And for us who recall the wondrous work of our creation and still the greater work of our redemption, we ask you, Lord, to bless this water. For you created the water to make the fields fruitful and to refresh and cleanse our bodies. You also made water the instrument of your mercy. For through water you freed your people from slavery and quenched their thirst in the desert. And through water the prophets proclaimed the new covenant. You were to enter upon with the human race. And last of all, through water which Christ made holy in the Jordan, you have renewed our corrupted nature in the bath of regeneration. Therefore, may this water be for us a memorial of, our, of the baptism we have received, and grant that we may share in the gladness of our brothers and sisters who at Easter have received their baptism through Jesus Christ our Lord.
May Almighty God cleanse us of our sins. If you didn't receive the water, you did not cleanse, so see me after. <laughs> and through the celebration of this Eucharist, make us worthy to share at the table of God's children in heaven. And those of you at home, I help you help you felt that water as well. If not, get up, grab some water, and sprinkle your sprouts, okay? <laughs> we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Together, let us sing to the glory of our God. Let us pray. God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast kindled the faith of the people you have made your own, increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Many signs and wonders were done among the people at the hands of the apostles. They were all together in Solomon's portico. None of the others dared to join them, but the people esteemed them. Yet more than ever, believers in the Lord 
great numbers of men and women, were added to them. Thus, they even carried the sick out into the streets and laid them on cots and mats, so that when Peter came by, at least his shadow might fall on one or another of them. A large number of people from the towns in the vicinity of Jerusalem also gathered, bringing the sick and those disturbed by unclean spirits, and they were all cured. The word of the Lord. Revelation. I, John, your brother, who share with you the distress, the kingdom, and the endurance we have in Jesus, found myself on the island called Patmos, because I proclaimed God's word and gave testimony to Jesus. I was caught up in the spirit of the Lord's day and heard behind me a voice as loud as a trumpet which said, Write on a scroll what you see. Then I turned to see whose voice it was that spoke to me. And when I turned, I saw seven golden lampstands. And in the midst of the lampstands, one like the Son of Man, wearing an ankle-length robe and a gold sash around his chest. 
When I caught sight of him, I fell down at his feet as though dead. He touched me with his right hand and said, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last, the one who lives. Once I was dead, but now I'm alive forever and ever. I hold the keys to death and the netherworld. Write down, therefore, what you have seen and what is happening and what will happen afterwards. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Lord. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger into the nail marks, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now, a week later, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here, and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side. And do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ.
Again, we welcome all of you here present, those joining us on our television broadcast live stream. As we celebrate the second Sunday of Easter, now if you came in late, and the pew where you are sitting is wet, that is holy water, okay? <laughs> you missed the sprinkling right at the beginning. But the second Sunday of Easter is the end of our octave. At one time it was called Low Sunday. And why was it called Low Sunday? Because we're all coming off that high of Easter. We've run out of jelly beans, we've run out of chocolate, and that sugar high that we've been on all these days is now coming down. And the glorious celebration is now coming down. The flowers are beginning to wilt a little. They're all coming down. And now it's Divine Mercy Sunday, where it picks us up again, right? Because we realize in our life that God's mercy comes down upon us, showers upon us. Because from what font were we washed? Our baptismal font, right? And that was the reminder of being washed this morning in the sprinkling rite. It's not just a little sprinkling. No, it's a downpour. Because it reminds us of that we are washed clean of our sins. We've been washed in the font. And by being washed in the font, we are renewed in what? The Spirit. The Holy Spirit that Jesus breathed on his disciples and said, now go forth. Bring the good news with you and forgive the sins that you forgive, but retain the sins that are not forgiven. And why are we forgiven? By whose blood? The blood of Jesus Christ that covers us, that has redeemed us. We heard all that in our opening prayer today. It is the font from which we are washed, the spirit by which we are renewed, and the blood by which we are redeemed. And so as we enter into this Divine Mercy Sunday, as we now have 42 more days of Easter, we continue the celebration in a way that comes naturally to us. Why? Because we believe. As Jesus told Thomas, don't live in your disbelief. Blessed are those who believe but have not seen. But you and I have the potential to see the risen Lord. We have that potential. As we have been washed in the fire, we have been renewed in the spirit, we have been covered with the blood of Jesus Christ. And so we go forth then into the world, sent forth as missionary disciples to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ. And it's not always with words that we proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ. It happens when our actions show that love that Jesus has for us. Whether we're driving, whether we're at home, whether we're at school, whether we're at work. Has our attitude changed this week? Because we have felt the joy of the risen Lord. Have we walked differently over these last few days? Yes, with fear, confused. Why? Because we don't know what all this means to us. But surely we can come and sit here week after week and year after year and year after year and hear the same old stories. But do you get it? Do we believe? And if we do, wonderful, then we are filled with the Easter joy. We recognize that life is a challenge and that we live for is not the things of this earth here. We live for the glory of God. And when we live for the glory of God, we know there's eternal life waiting for us. Why? Because we have lived in that love. We have lived in the mercy. We have been washed. We have been renewed. We have been covered with the blood of Jesus Christ. And so, like Peter, we can go forth. And Peter wasn't saying, as we heard in the first reading, come to me, all of you, and I will heal you. No, that wasn't the call, and that's not the call that you and I have. Peter just because he was open, renewed and breathed upon with the Holy Spirit, was able to just reach out and heal people. When his shadow was cast over people, they were cured. Now, do you and I carry that same spirit with us? Do you and I carry that same joy? Do you and I carry the same power? We do if we believe. But most of us don't believe that we can do that. My father was a believer, holy cow. He thought he could cure everything. 
I think I told the story once when our washing machine was broken down and he called us all downstairs and said, okay, we're gonna put our hands on the washing machine. We're gonna pray that it be healed. Well, it wasn't healed. But I think we all were, <laughs> in a sense. But the whole sense of it is, what do we carry within us? Do we carry a belief from our toes all the way up our legs, into our heart, into our minds, down through our fingers, that we carry the Spirit of God with us? And that Spirit of God invites us to do as Jesus says, once Jesus rose from the dead, we don't hear of any miracles that Jesus did, but we hear his disciples then did those miracles. Why? Because they came to believe. They came to understand. They came to an understanding of the fullness of what Jesus was calling them to. Well, surely they were terrified, but the Holy Spirit came upon them. And as we wait to celebrate then the festival of Pentecost, Will we be prepared to then live our lives truly as Christians, as Catholics in today's world, in a way that we carry ourselves filled with joy, filled with hope, because of divine mercy? Forgive us our sins and those of the whole world. How many times have we who prayed the novena said that over and over and over? And Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you. Are those just mere words? Or do we truly believe it? Do we be like those other disciples who said to Thomas, we saw the Lord? Or are we like Thomas who says, oh, I'm not going to believe until I can truly see the marks in his hand and put my hand in his side? That was all a farce, no? What Jesus did to us, he led us on and then, boof, pulled the rug from underneath us. And how many times have we said that in life, in our own struggles? I've been living well, but yet now I have a cancer diagnosis. I've been living well, but oh, now I've been laid off. Oh, I've been living well, been doing right, been saving. Oh, now my retirement account, account is going down and down and down. We lose faith when those things happen, but why? Because do we trust? Do we trust that the Lord Jesus is going to take care of us? Do we trust that the power and the life that we have in his name will sustain us till eternal glory? And how do you and I then bring that with us in a way that changes us, that calls us to new life? Do we bring that peace that Jesus says? How many times will we hear now Jesus says to his disciples, peace be with you, peace be with you, peace be with you. And we'll hear that again and again throughout this Easter season. Why? Because we need to hear it in order to accept it. And we wait for Jesus to touch us. But no, we need to go forward and touch those holes in his hand. To put our hand in his side and to say, yes, Jesus, you are real. You're not just a name. You're not just a belief. But allow my faith to truly trust in you, to truly know that you are alive, to truly know that what you call me to is a peace that I will find in my heart, my mind, my body, wherever I need that peace in life. I will find it now because I'm walking in this Easter joy, in this Easter light, in the Easter challenge that goes before each and every one of us to live into what we will soon renew, our baptismal promises. And when we do so, then we will find, yes, I have life in his name. We have life in his name. The world has life in his name. But why is it every week I hear of more and more young people trying to commit suicide? Why do I hear of overdose of opiate drugs? Why do I hear of beatings going on at home? Why do we hear of marriages that aren't working? Why do we hear that my family is divided? Where is that peace that you and I need in our life? Where is that peace that we need in our world? And if I were to accept that peace today and div the divine mercy that flows from Jesus, from his wound, and my life was changed, would I be bearable at home? You know, it is a challenge. When my dad had his conversion, he was unbearable to live with. 
because he was so filled with joy and so filled with wanting to heal, so filled with wanting to bring the word, we had to listen to tapes every night on how we could bring the good news of Jesus Christ into the world. Every night at dinner. But I think it got into my head, got into my heart. And it's not just we to stand here and preach and proclaim. When it comes true is when we hit the streets when we go to work, when I go home. Maybe now, after 50 years, I will try to listen to you, where I haven't listened for the last 30. And I claimed it was my hearing loss. Uh Uh-uh. Selective hearing, right? Maybe I'll understand, wait, my parents are trying to provide for me. I may not have what all these other young people have, But what I have is a home. I have love. I'm cared about. What is it and where is it that we need the peace of Jesus Christ in our world today? Jesus says, peace be with you. So he gives it to all of us. Now it's up to us to accept it first and then to carry it with us and to go forth into the world to bring peace into our homes, to bring peace into our places of work, to bring peace into our schools, to bring peace into our streets, to bring peace to the world that right now doesn't have it. So if we can stand in peace, if you and I can stand momentarily to renew our baptismal promises robustly, then we will come to understand, we will come to believe, and then perhaps we will proclaim when we see the true mystery that happens here at this altar, my Lord and my God, that we will see what Jesus gives to us is his life. And in his life is where we can find peace, where we can be washed, what spirit we are renewed in, and what, by what blood we have been redeemed. So let us stand together and be renewed in the baptism that we have received. So my dear brothers and sisters, it is through the Paschal mystery that we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may walk with him in the newness of life. So let us renew the promises of holy baptism by which we once renounced Satan and his works and promised to serve God in the Holy Catholic Church. And so I ask, do you renounce sin so as to live in the freedom of the children of God? Do you renounce the lure of evil so that sin may have no mastery over you? I do. Do you renounce Satan, the author and prince of sin? I do. A little hesitant there. (laughs) Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death, and was buried? rose again from the dead and is seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins, keep us by his grace, in Christ Jesus our Lord, for eternal life. Amen. Amen. And now let us place our needs before our God, confident that the one who raised Jesus to new life will give us new life and peace. That the church may always be a font of the peace of the risen Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all peoples of the world may receive the Spirit of God and live in peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our newly baptized, especially Leonardo Joseph Palin, who will be baptized this afternoon May the Holy Spirit lead them to share in the peace of Christ all the days of their lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
for those who are preparing for their first communion and confirmation during the Easter season. Like the Apostle Thomas, may they come to believe in the resurrected Christ as someone like themselves. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are gathered at this table, may be firm in our belief, generous in our care of others, and open to the movement of the Spirit. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are in need of God's healing, especially those mentioned in our um, prayer ministry, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, may they receive everlasting life in Jesus Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we join together in praying the Archdiocesan Synod Prayer. Come, Holy Spirit, make our ears to hear, make our eyes to see, make our mouths to see, make our hearts to see, make our hands to reach out and touch the world with your love. Amen. Mary, Mother of the Church, pray for us.
pray, my sisters and brothers, that this, my sacrifice and yours, may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may obtain unending happiness through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For Jesus is the true Lamb, who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up, for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim 
by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. And grant that we who are nourished by the body and the blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. And may he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. And may this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, Bernard, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, and to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Jesus Christ, our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory of our Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. Amen. Let us offer to each other a humble sign of peace.
You're welcome to look at the screens which show our procession to come forward to receive the body of Christ. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter into my room, but only the Savior of my soul shall be.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We thank you all for joining us today in this second Sunday, the octave of Easter, as we continue now in our weeks ahead in this Easter celebration. May we truly feel the gift of the Holy Spirit come over us, come into us, so that we may share with others the peace that we find in Jesus Christ. And part of that peace is to enjoy a donut today after Mass. So in the social hall, we do have coffee and donuts to bring that extra joy into our Easter season, to fill you up a little more with a little sugar after this down, after the jelly beans and chocolates have disappeared, okay? So please join us for coffee and donuts after Mass today and bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity and in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. Amen. And may he who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten Son endow you with the prize of immortality. Amen. And now that the days of the Lord's passion have drawn to a close, May you who celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast come with Christ's help and exalting in spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia. Alleluia.